organic, unpredictable, unknown, lovely, beautiful, a sense of fulfillment. This is part of the pleasures of life and not the chores of life. Tonight on Daily Iowan TV, simulator jet planes. We're headed out to the airport for a closer look. And we've all been through hard breakups, but what is hard breakups actually doing to your body? This week, we are looking for the warm temperature and check out my update weather information in the studio. Lots of exciting Hawkeye action here in Iowa City and on the road. Coming up in sports. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Bradley Martin. And I'm Keaton Fuller. America said goodbye to one of its most beloved and influential first ladies today with the passing of Nancy Reagan. Reagan died of congestive heart failure in her Los Angeles home at the age of 94. In her time in the White House, Reagan was known for being the spokesperson of the Just Say No anti-drug campaign, being named honorary president of the Girl Scouts, and aiding her husband politically. Many public officials are speaking out, including Mitt Romney. Reagan will be buried next to her husband at the Ronald Reagan Presidential Library in California. And what happens when autopilot fails and a pilot can no longer see? I sat down with researchers from the Avionics Operator Performance Lab at the University of Iowa to better understand the risk and who it can affect. Here's the story. The University of Iowa Avionics Operating Performance Lab is conducting groundbreaking research. Tonight, we hit the runway to find out more. We're a full service flight test organization, so people who want to test uh, equipment or test certain aspects of pilot behavior can come to us. With a full fleet of helicopters, drones, and fighter jets, OPL is making the skies a safer place. We accelerated inertial systems like aircraft, then our sensory system cannot always determine which way is up and down, and, and that's particularly problematic in degraded visual environments. Not knowing which way is up and down has to do with the fact that you don't see the real world. No airline pilot, no pilot would ever have a question which way is up and down when you can look out the window and you see it. If flying a plane were not scary enough, not being aware of where obstacles or landings may be is even scarier. And that's something I got to experience firsthand. All these senses that are not visual can be fooled by the, the gravitational uh, accelerations that are being generated by the aircraft giving rise to the p possibility that you think up is this way when in fact it's down. But it's not all serious. The coolest thing I've, I've done working here is uh, spending time in the, the back of a jet flying uh, missions where we're working in a virtual environment but with like real entities that are on the ground. Reporting from the Iowa City Municipal Airport in Iowa City, I'm Bradley Martin. Good night. And with more wins under his belt, GOP frontrunner Donald Trump turned the heat up once again for rival Marco Rubio to drop out. Over the weekend, Trump won Louisiana and Kentucky, bringing his total victories to 12. Ted Cruz won in Maine and Kansas, raising his state wins to six. However, Rubio failed to complete out in any states on Saturday. Minnesota is his only current state win. Trump is working out a push Rubio out campaign, saying Marco has to get out of the race, has to. And very, very, and having, of course, a very, very bad night on Saturday does not help. The next show down for the GOP will be Tuesday in Idaho for the Idaho primary. Across the aisle, the Democrats are also in a tight race, and that doesn't seem to be changing. Bernie Sanders came out on top, though. On Saturday, Sanders was victorious in Kansas and Nebraska while Hillary Clinton won in Louisiana. Even with Sanders' wins, he is still lacking in the number of delegates. Clinton had 1,121 delegates against Sanders' 481. They each take the stage Sunday night in Flint, Michigan for a debate. Well, Keaton, it has uh, certainly been warming up outside, and this week mm -hmm. it's looking to be mid-50s. I know, I'm just hoping it stays this gorgeous through going to spring break. Same here, same um, here. Let's throw it over to Daisy Lee in the weather studio to find out more. Thanks, Keaton and Brad. Things are heating up. It's getting warmer this week. 
Monday morning, we have temperatures at 52 degrees with an overcast sky. Monday afternoon, temperatures heat up to 60 degrees and back down to 59 in the evening with overcast skies as well. Taking a look at the rest of the week. Tuesday, we have a glorious high of 66 degrees and low of 52 with a 30% chance of thunderstorms. That will be one of the first thunderstorms of the season. Wednesday, there is a high chance of 59 and low of 42 with more rain in the afternoon on Thursday. The high will be 60 and it will be partly cloudy sky. Your weekend is looking pretty nice with highs in the 60s and lows around 50. There is a high chance of rain on the Saturday, so get those rain ponchos ready. That's all for now from the weather studio. I'm Daisy Lee. Back to your guests at the desk. And it's not just green energy, it's grass energy. The UI worked with Reprieve Renewables to harvest Minificus, a tall grass just south of Iowa City for environmental benefits. The machine running in the field is a forage chopper. It cuts and chops the minificus stalks and then puts them into the wagon. And the wagon is then uploaded into the trucks. The trucks take the grass, do a yard in Muscatine, <laughs> where it's mixed with coal. The mixture then returns to Iowa City's power plant to help supply power, steam, and of course, chilled water to the main campus. This was just harvested in the past week uh, in the Iowa City area, and that's part of our biomass fuel project, we call it, which is an effort to displace coal with biomass at the university for providing energy for the university campus. Uh, that's part of our 2020 goal to provide 40% renewable energy for the campus. Well, Brad, there was a lot of wrestling going on this weekend. There was. And to hear more about wrestling and all the other Hawkeye sports, let's throw it over to Taylor Brooks in the sports studio. Thanks, Keaton and Brad. Wrestling was crazy in Carver Hawkeye Arena. We'll get to that later. This weekend, though, there were some ups and downs beginning with women's basketball on Thursday. The Iowa women's basketball team put up a fight against Maryland this weekend, but saw their Big Ten tournament journey come to an end. Holly Reimer has a recap of that game. Iowa women's hoops met the University of Maryland Terrapins for the first time in Big Ten tournament history. With Maryland being seated at the number one spot, Iowa undoubtedly came into this game as an underdog. They were off to a high energy start in the first quarter, shooting 75%. Junior Allie Disterhoff led the stats in first quarter once again, putting 10 points on the board for Iowa's 28 to 18 lead. We came in excited about playing Maryland and the opportunity ahead of us. Um, we played great defense, uh, good offense, we moved the ball, uh, took our open shots, and they were falling. In the second quarter, Maryland kicked up their game, scoring a whopping 21 points against Iowa's four. The Hawks headed to the locker room seven points behind at half. The message was we have 20 more minutes to make this happen, you know, make a wonderful thing happen in one day. So that was pretty much our message. In the second half, Iowa fought tooth and nail to regain their lead over Maryland. This aggressive game player had players Chase Coley and Megan Gustafson sitting at four fouls apiece. With just three minutes left in the fourth quarter, Gustafson fouled out. In the end, it was Maryland's defensive skill that allowed them to hang on to the lead for a final score of 75 to 55. I think the first quarter, I think that's like the team we are. And I think the last three quarters, I don't know what happened. We started falling apart and it was really frustrating because that's not Iowa basketball and that's not how we play. While Iowa's run at the Big Ten tournament has officially come to a close, the team now plays a waiting game to see if they get a bid for the NCAA tournament mid-March through early April. I'm Holly Reimer, Daily Iowan TV Sports. Iowa will receive their postseason fate Monday afternoon when the NCAA announces its pairings. The 19 and 13 Hawkeyes are one of 10 teams that have qualified for eight consecutive NCAA tournaments, so hopefully they can get that bid. Iowa men's basketball has definitely secured their spot in the NCAA tournament, though. But what about seedings for the Big Ten tournament? Unfortunately, that's in the hands of Purdue in Maryland. If Purdue beats Wisconsin and Maryland beats Indiana, Iowa's double by hopes for the Big Ten tourney look good, especially after their 71-61 finish against Michigan Saturday night. But there's no doubt that during Iowa's losing streak, they weren't playing tough. I thought we competed hard against Wisconsin. I thought we competed hard against Ohio State. And same for Indiana. We lost to three really good teams, played a really good team tonight, played better. 
but you know we're we're fighting. You know, you're back to you know 19 assist, eight turns. That's more like us. Same thing last game. Hadn't been like that for a little while, so that's good to see. Check us out on Monday's show where we hash out the Big Ten tournament seedings before the big dance in Indianapolis later this week. Excuse me. There was a Big Ten championship happening right here in Iowa City over the weekend as Carver Hawkeye Arena became home to many wrestling fans. Sports reporter Alyssa Klosterman was Matt's side for the first and second sessions and gives us an update. One of the biggest competitions in college sports started today, held in no other than the greatest wrestling venue in the country, Carver Hawkeye Arena. As session two comes to a wrap, the Hawkeyes expect to come out on top. Day one of the Big Ten Championships began Saturday morning, awarding wrestlers not only a berth to the national championships in Madison Square Garden, but the title of a Big Ten champion. Corey Clark. Brandon Sorensen, Sammy Brooks, and Nathan Burak are the four Hawkeyes who remain in the race to be crowned best in the Big Ten. We got three guys. We got Gilman, we got Meyer, and we got um, one more for third, and then we got four in the finals. We got another day of wrestling. That's how we're looking right now. Uh, you know, I want to win. I want to get uh, my name on the board. And, you know, I don't want that feeling again of getting beat. It's not a good feeling. You know, let's get over it. Let's do it right this year. Staying focused. Not letting up in positions where I can give up easy scores. Got to figure out how to get scored on. Like I said, I wasn't going to lose in the semis again. You got to come back strong tomorrow. It's uh, a lot on the line right now. Reporting at sold out Carver Hawkeye Arena, I'm Melissa Kloshman, Daily Iowan, TV Sports. On Monday night's show, Laura Belanda will take us into the Big Ten Championship Finals as I was Corey Clark, Brandon Sorensen, Sammy Brooks, and Nathan Burak landed themselves in the championship round Sunday afternoon. Now moving to a different court and arena, Iowa men's tennis lost to in-state rival Drake on Saturday. Hawkeyes Lef Lefterius Theodore and Jake Jacoby won two of the six single matches before pairing up to dominate their double match. Dominic Patrick and Josh Silverstein followed suit, winning their double match as well. But the Hawks came up short as the 36th ranked Bulldogs edged the 33 Hawkeyes 4-3. The men's team is 7-3 heading into Big Ten play this season. They will host Nebraska on March 11th in Iowa City to begin that conference play. That does it for me in the sports studio. Back to you guys at the desk. The month of February brought a lot of talk about the impact of love. But what many don't know is that heartbreak can affect us in many ways. When in a relationship, our brain has an increase in oxytocin and dopamine levels, which signal happiness. Our bodies then become accustomed to this feeling of love. This production ceases when we go through heartbreak, which leads to de feelings of depression. And perhaps the most well-known result of elevated uh, cortisol levels is the immunological impairment. So for example, I'm sure you've probably had a very stressful week as in finals week. Um, the stress hormone cortisol actually has immunological effects and impairs your immunology due to the elevated plasma cortisol levels. And this is why it's common to get sick after a very stressful event. For example, maybe after a breakup or also finals week. Heartbreak is not in your head and can have serious mental and physical impacts. And in the waters of Hawaii, scientists have found a ghost-like octopot 14,000 feet down. On the floor of the ocean, of course, the translucent species was found sitting on a flat rock. While it is thought to be a new species, species excuse me, the octopod is even more unusual because they have two rows of suckers on their tentacles. Because of the lack of pigment and shape, many have dubbed this creature Casper the Friendly Octopod after the ghost. Well, Brad, I'm hoping not to run into an octopod over spring break, personally. Uh, myself included in that, I'll be staying on the shallow side of the ocean. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't be great. But that's all we have for you tonight on Daily Iowan TV. Check us out, as always, on dailyiowan.com for any breaking news now in between our next newscast on Monday. For Daily Iowan TV, I'm Bradley Martin. And I'm Keaton Fuller. Have a good night.